Hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday morning. Yeah, it's it is Tuesday, Tuesday today. Yeah. We usually do this Mondays. So. We usually do Monday, yeah. but didn't work out yesterday. Had yeah. a busy day. So yes. we are here on Tuesday because we didn't want to let this go mm -hmm. without digging into it. And uh, that was our last message, I believe, in the mental health series because we're doing a, a All Praise Sunday this next that's right this next sunday which will be a natural continuation of yes the series itself but that's um right. that was our last sermon and you did a really good job closing it up oh so, thank, thank you. you yeah thank you as i know kind of a passion topic of yours mental health just the nature of your job puts you in that yes it does realm often yeah i was so. looking forward to it but it was also some messages come easier than others, mm -hmm. and um, there's just so much to say about this topic. And yeah. I'm not an expert, so, but I've worked in it enough to have too much to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there is way too much to say in three weeks of a series, and you only got one week, so there's definitely yes, way too much for right. you to say. In and I went 10 week. minutes over <laughs> as it was in the message. That's okay. It was the song. It was the song. It was the song. Yeah. 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 Which, Which I love that song. Blessed. But I think it's mm -hmm. ver excuse me, Vertical Worship. Man, what a great song. I listened it to it this morning. It's a really good song. Um, something I thought we could just start with uh, was the idea that you started the sermon with. I think it's good for us to start here with this conversation also lest anyone start to think that oh it's mental health this one doesn't apply yes, to me yeah, yeah. uh you said we've all been in recovery since adam and eve yeah which i think is a super true statement yeah um and a biblical statement mm. but what like i mean you you said it so what inspired that thought why could you just expand on that well there's some sensitivity because in recovery, people often feel like there are those people and then there are the rest of us. And in fact, sometimes in Celebrate Recovery, people will wear shirts that says, I am one of those people. Okay. Or there's the thought that I'm not one of those people. Yeah. And as I said on Sunday, I understand what people, why people would say that. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest none of us are perfect that's easy enough to say right but let's go deeper than that since adam and eve we've all been in a very fallen world mm -hmm. and we're all very broken and one person's addiction may be um alcohol and another person's addiction might be materialism or spending and in our culture we would tend to categorize those yeah like one's bad and one's expected well before god we're all very broken people and i just yeah. want to level the playing field it's not to say people who are struggling with a chemical addiction don't need a particular kind of help right but lest we say well i hope those people are listening to this sermon and this mm -hmm. doesn't apply to me that's what i that's why i wanted to say that yeah no that is an important point and i think um we do tend to break up sin into different categories yes. of like acceptable and unacceptable and, right. and <laughs> i don't know why we have decided that we could take that responsibility on ourselves uh because things that are defined as sin is you know standing between your ability to perfectly love God or yeah, love other people, that's right. then it's sinful. And that happens when we're loving ourselves yeah. more than we're loving others, which is true in chemical addictions. It's true in uh, the ones that we can see. Yeah. And I think the ones that we can see often become the ones of like, whoa, those people, right, <laughs> you know, exactly. that's often what it is. But um I, we have to understand that, you know, I have pride that I have to deal with and that's getting in the way of my ability to love somebody else. And Absolutely. And even, even the very <clears throat> act to say, well, they're struggling with this sin and that makes them so much worse than me, that in and of itself is sin. Yeah. 
Yes, it is. So good reminder. We're all on the same, uh, we all have the same need for recovery. I think That's right. you can hear a really powerful testimony, um, but ultimately the the format of anybody's testimony is always the same, right? That's right. It's before yep. I knew the Lord, I met the Lord, and now the Lord is doing that's this right. in my life. And that's that's where all of us find ourselves, somewhere in those three categories. So. Absolutely. And Christ, <clears throat> Christ didn't die because I have it all together. Mm-hmm. He died for me because I don't have it all together. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we talked through the Beatitudes, which was cool because yeah. uh, I didn't know that they were so deeply connected to the 12 steps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know, especially in, uh, you guys use those and celebrate recovery. Um, and what, and what's cool about it is that you guys stay connected to the higher power is God. Um, but also with celebrate recovery, it's anybody with hurts, habits or hangups, yes, right? Is how right. you say it. Yeah. And so that again, encapsulates all of us. That's right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Most people are surprised to hear that only about 30% of people. Mm -hmm. And that's a significant number because there are literally 37,000 weekly Celebrate Recovery meetings around the world. Wow, that's a lot. Of that number, of which we are just one here, Christ Community, uh, only about 30% of people who attend mm -hmm. all CRs struggle with chemical addiction. Wow. That means 70% struggle with, we could name all kinds of things, overeating, overspending, relationships, um, divorce, some are struggling with grief, pornography, um, gambling, you name it. Mm -hmm. People come 70%. But one of the challenges we face is the word recovery is in the name of this ministry. Right. And so understandably people hear recovery and they think chemical addiction. Yeah. It's much broader than that in celebrate recovery. I mean, something that it's probably worth noting is there's the there's the chemicals on the outside addiction, right? But mm. all of us have the brain chemicals yes. and that's really what that's, we need to that's right. level out and recover from. So it's it's not so much the what's the chemical on the outside, but what is it chemically doing to my brain on the inside when I engage in these things? Absolutely. Um, if you look at if you look at brain scans of people who are addicted to various things, um Probably wouldn't surprise you if I said the brain scan of an alcoholic does not look like a healthy brain. Mm -hmm. But the brain scan of somebody addicted to pornography or gambling, you would see you would see distortions in those brain scans as well. Yeah. Similar to the ones that are brain scans of people with a physical chemical addiction. That's right. That's um, right. And we have to recognize that the notification on our cell phone often triggers the same chemical right. release so that's right um yeah it's really it's interesting yeah you know the beatitudes with your point uh i do think it's fascinating that when bill wilson mm -hmm. who goes by bill w and dr bob smith when they wrote the 12 steps you can look it up they would rely on the sermon on the mount and the beatitudes in particular yeah so that's why I like to let people know there's a direct connection th between one of the predominant if not the majority can't say that for sure because mm -hmm. it's hard to say if it's the majority strategy of recovery but a predominant form of recovery in the United States and I think in the world is yeah. the 12 steps and it uses these eight Beatitudes yeah and it, you were so helpful in breaking them up into kind of more clear categories, so broader categories. Yes. So we had, um, which I think is huge because when we, I mean, we mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago the fact that sin is anything that's keeping us from loving mm. God or loving people yes. perfectly, yeah. right? And those are kind of the first two categories right. in the Beatitudes is um, the first couple are this is directly connected to our relationship with God um, and having the humility and, and the posture, the posture of humility to approach God realizing like, I can't 
and it has to be you. Yeah. Um, that was a, that was a great place to start. It's always a good place to start. Yeah, Thank that's for God, sure. Right. Yeah, the first three are all about humility, and I love how James four <clears throat> really summarizes. James four seven to ten summarizes that um, if we're not humble before God, we can't be in a right relationship with Him. We can always. God is always gracious and we can always get back, but humility really is the key. And humility is the key in recovery. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the first lessons in recovery is coming out of denial. Well, that takes humility to yeah. come out of denial and say, I don't have it all together. Right. I need help. Well, that's exactly what we say to God when yeah. we come to him. That's true. And then that leads into loving people. If I'm, if I'm, this, you can always find exceptions to this but in general if i'm in a right relationship with god and i'm coming to him humbly then my disposition toward other people mm -hmm. will likely be one of humility at least it will move the needle in that direction it'll take a whole lifetime but it will move the needle in the direction of humility toward people right which is important um because i think so often and especially when we're thinking about this topic in particular is that humble recognition that okay I might not have the same thing going on on the outside that you do yeah but I got stuff going on on the inside and I'm not okay either that's right um and and it does it's that's I mean humility really is a great leveler of the playing field yes, right for all of us it's yeah. saying like I need to know that if I follow my own thought process, if I follow my own will, yeah. that I'm going to go wrong. I'm going to hurt people. Mm. I'm going to hurt myself. Yes. I'm going to hurt God. Yes. Which reminds me of one of my, I don't know if it's a favorite saying, but it's very pointed saying in mm -hmm. recovery. And that is hurting people hurt people. Yeah. Yep. Well, the first three Beatitudes teach us that people who are humble um, are recognizing that their relationship with God is not right. And so a healthy person in a growing relationship with Christ is mm -hmm. more likely to help people. So people in a, yeah. we could say the opposite is true. People in a right relationship with God are more likely not to hurt people, but to help people. Right. Well, so then those last couple Beatitudes kind yeah. of point us towards the living it out that's right right um and you said something to the effect of because i was trying so hard to write things verbatim but kept saying very good things oh. so i was running out of but uh i was <laughs> i was just looking at it i was thinking you know when we um you had said something along the lines of when we imitate the peace of god we become a picture of that yes. peace to other yes. people yes yes um and that's what we want for our living it out That's to right. be um just kind of a picture of the hope that we can that we have mm. and that everybody can have in christ yeah and that's the ephesians 2 i think it's 2 is it 14 um jesus himself is our peace mm -hmm. and so he's our peace we imitate him because he's perfectly mentally healthy yep and when we do so, we become peacemakers, which in turn, it doesn't make life perfect, but it does bring our, our mental health, not mental illness, because you can have a mental illness and still be mental, moving towards mental health. Right. Um, but when we live pursuing peace, which is hard to do in this world, then it will give us um, a healthier state of mental health. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you, so there's three different categories here of practical steps. And this is what we ended on. And yeah. I think it was just a yeah, yeah. really good thing to walk away with because everybody, excuse me, everybody can grab something from each of those categories, yeah. right? Wouldn't recommend trying to do all of the things immediately because <laughs> that will just get overwhelming and right. probably cause you more That's mental right. health mental unhealth than yes, health that's right. um but we can all grab one thing from each uh category so i was thinking like what would you grab from 
that personal steps category, the relational category, and the spiritual category. Yeah, well, one of my favorites has become the word pause, partly because I don't do it well. But I do find a lot of value in believing that, first of all, in most situations, I have the ability to stop what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I can move ahead or I can stay still for a moment. I have, God's given me the ability to make that decision. And so I find when people, when I pause, uh, good things are more likely to happen. Things that I, mm -hmm. mentally healthy things okay. are more likely to happen. So I like that one, just pause, take a deep breath, which is one of them. Box breathing, by the way, yeah. is if you read the work of Brene Brown, I think she gets it from the military, is breathing, inhaling for four seconds, holding it for four, exhaling for four, and then holding your breath for four, and mm -hmm. then starting it over. Um, it really does help to bring you down. So pause and breathing and praying, uh, those three you can kind yeah. of do at the same time, really helpful. Yep. All right, so in relational step, what would you, what yeah, would you say? Yeah, these are tough ones. Um, family, friends, we all know that relationships can be really hard. We talk about this in recovery, not just celebrate recovery, but keep in mind the predominant form of recovery in the United States is the 12 steps. Overeaters Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, you name the anonymous, Sex and Love Addiction Anonymous. They're using the 12 steps. The 12 steps teach them to get right with people by what we call making amends. Mm -hmm. I apologize for what I've done. Yeah. Or, or forgiving people. And so those two often go hand in hand. Uh, and so you've asked me for one. I'm actually giving you all three. You are, but that's uh, okay. <laughs> uh, avoiding isolation. Isolation is brutal. Mm -hmm. It's brutal. And it's not easy for some to change. Right. Some people, it's not like everybody who's isolated wants to be isolated. Right. I just know that I've seen when people spend a lot of time alone, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons we have uh, any number of groups here, any number of care ministries that you can come to and connect with people. Right. They're not perfect groups, but they are, they are broken people willing uh, to spend time together and avoid isolation. Yeah, absolutely. And then spiritual step you can take. Yeah. There's all kinds of them. But one you mentioned was the listening to Christian music. And oh, like, yes. That's like in your mind something that all of a sudden has been Don't get a really started. cool thing. Yeah, I, I have listened to Christian music for 35 years. And I remember as a teenager when I first heard about it, outside of church, mm -hmm. like it was from a Christian friend who was, right. I thought was a bit of a fanatic Christian. Okay. Yeah. And he told me about this uh, group um, called Petra. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? And so anyway, Christian music went later went on to become it's come a long way in those 35 years. It's come a long way. <laughs> listening. It really has. Yeah. But I do think I said this Sunday, I think it's a disconnect. If we come to church on Sunday and sing four or five songs, mm -hmm. we are not doing that just to be religious. Right. Now, I know we all express express ourselves differently in worship. We are doing that because there's something inherently powerful about singing truth about God back to God. Mm -hmm. And doing it together is powerful, too. Yeah. Um, but I just think there's a disconnect if we go a whole week and we have we not exposed ourselves to anything that powerful. So there's a lot of good Christian radio out there. Um, that's generally all that I listen to. I'm mm -hmm. not holding that up as, as everybody should do that. But if you don't do that at all, I just would right. say try it. Yeah. Try it for, I don't know, 10 minutes a day, whatever. Yeah. And, and see how it affects you mentally and spiritually. Yeah. I think it does turn us into a more kind of hopeful place in our mind. Um, but yeah. 
All right, we have to start wrapping up because I watched Sean give me the time signals and I just oh. blew right through them. Oh, like okay. I didn't care. I didn't even see I, that. Yeah, I would have kept going. Sneaky, sneaky signals from Sean and I just didn't care today. I, I do want to. <laughs> it was such a good conversation. If I can end, Sean, I do want to say we have all of these care ministries. Uh, we would love for you to check one out. Um, the new ones that uh, yes. have just started. We have Hopeful Minds, which I can't believe that's been almost a year. It's, yep. That's insane. It's a year. Next um, month. Which I'm um, so thankful for Lauren and her leadership on that. She really knocks it out of the park. And then we also have a brand new ministry called Anchored. And this is for women who have experienced mm -hmm. all kinds of abuse. Uh, it could be physical, but it could be even um, cyber stalking and anything in between. And it's single, married, divorced. It's for any woman who's experienced any kind of abuse. That's my name. Yes, that's awesome. And, and then the Stephen Ministry. Stephen Ministry, right. So <clears throat> Stephen Ministry, many, many churches uh, in the United States are official Stephen Ministry churches. And yeah. I am so proud to say that we are now one too. We have nine people who, starting back in January, meet on Monday nights for I think it's two and a half yeah. hours. And by the time they're they're just about finished, they each will have received 50 hours of volunteer That's training. That's a lot for a caring, listening kind of ministry. So I encourage you to check out any one of those uh, ministries, any one of the new ones, any of the ones we've had. Divorce Care and Grief Share we've had here for upwards literally of 25 years. Yeah. It's wild. Celebrate Recovery. We have the Meals Ministry. All um, kinds of things. That's right. It's Every awesome. And I know that you have tons of volunteers. You said over 50 we have that over make 50. all of these happen. That's right. Uh, but it wouldn't be happening without you in the in the leader seat. So thank you thank for you. that. Yeah. Um, like you said, Sunday, we're never going to find perfect mental health no. on this side of heaven. That's right. Right. That's right. But we can pursue comfort and peace and we can pursue better mental health. And that's really what we hope everybody took from this series in general was just here's some practical tools yeah for for better mental health that's right and yeah that's we, right we want to walk with everybody in that and so if if you have questions or needs or want to get connected with one of these groups please reach out to us we're yeah. open doors and care at open email lines is the exactly yeah yep okay well, thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks for sticking it out with us. This was a long one today. Sorry, Sean. That was only like five minutes, right? Yeah, we're all right. Oh. Well, you went 10 minutes long in your sermon, oh, so yeah, it so seemed like it made sense that we could go a little sure. long with this one, too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Have a great week, y'all. We'll see you back next week. See ya.